So when you've finished your mini masterpiece, you've recorded all that great footage and you've put it into the editing timeline and you've created a finished edit, you need to think about what you're going to do with it then. The first thing to consider is distribution. You could be doing something as simple as just watching it on your laptop or uploading it to YouTube. Other options, you could be putting it on your Facebook page or you could be even displaying it on a TV for your friends and family. Or even, if it's especially good, it could be being shown at a local film festival. When you consider distribution, it's important to think about the different file formats that you need to export in. The way I always choose to do this is I export in the very highest possible quality, and then I consider afterwards what my client or my distribution platform requires. This particular video is being recorded in the very highest possible quality right now, when I finished editing it, I'll hand it over to our media team and it'll be handed over in a very high quality format called ProRes 422. Only then will it be converted down for you to be able to watch it on the internet, on iTunes or on other platforms. Converting to high quality formats like ProRes is quite straightforward in most editing packages. Those simpler ones may not be able to. In iMovie, I make use of the export using QuickTime function. From here, I can select which format I wish to output in, and I can find my favourite high quality output here, ProRes 422. I might change a few parameters around here, and I also want the highest quality audio, linear PCM. And we're done. Once you've dealt with this exporting process, you have to consider archiving your whole project. Do you want to keep all those source clips in case you want them again? Do you need to clear space on your computer disks yet? Do you think that you might ever need to come back to the project to perform further edits? You'll also want to consider where and how you want to archive your project as there are many options. For instance, did you know that tape is still one of the most common professional archiving formats? The Open University has thousands of tapes in their media archive. Of course, you could decide to archive to a DVD or Blu-ray disc, or even to an external hard disk, and these are probably more suitable solutions unless you have a professional tape deck handy. It's also worth considering how easily your editing application copes with archiving. Some applications just can't handle it because they create complicated libraries of all your files. Others, such as Final Cut or Premiere, make it very easy, especially through their use of project and media management tools. For example, here in Final Cut, I could use the Media Manager. This facility effectively creates a new project with all my media collected together. Its various functions enable me to choose exactly how I want to archive my project. Alternatively, if my project files and my media are well organised, I could just archive that immediately to my chosen platform, such as my DVD drive here. Whatever your chosen route, you must make sure to archive everything that you think you'll need in the future. And one other thing is to make sure that you get all your rights sorted. This makes things much easier in the future, especially if you need to come back and reuse that entire edit or even some of the footage again.